on the pitying to him who has knowledge man himself is the animal with red cheeks now what does that mean the animal with red cheeks that means shame or there's a blush you know of um, of shame on the cheeks none of the other animals are ashamed of themselves only man um, how did this come about is it not because man has had to be ashamed too often well why was he ashamed at all but so okay um, oh my friends thus speaks he who has knowledge shame 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 that is the history of man and that is why he who is noble bids himself not to shame shame he imposes on himself before all who suffer cryptic sentence verily I do not like them the merciful who feel blessed in their pity now there's um, a line from Dominique in the Fountainhead where the guy says you, he doesn't like Howard Ward because you can't feel pity for him and um, Dominique says yeah pity what a wonderful feeling and it's like taking off a girdle you can just it's like looking out at a sw squashed caterpillar it's easy anyone can feel pity so no you can't feel pity for Howard Rourke I quite agree something like that pretty well done I thought but uh, he mentions these people who feel blessed in their pity and when they're feeling pity that's when they're most uplifted uh, they are lacking too much in shame so you when you pity people you don't have enough shame if I must pity at least I do not want to I do not want it known so don't tell anybody that I felt pity and if I do pity it is preferably from a distance because whatever you're pitying on you wouldn't want to be very close to it I should also like to shroud my face and flee before I am recognized skip a few sentences as long as there have been men, man has felt too little joy. That alone, my brothers, is our original sin. And learning better to feel joy, we learn best not to hurt others or to plan hurts for them. Okay, there we are. So how would we get out of war? How would we get... Everyone wants to do away with war. No more war, give peace a chance. Well, the way to do it here is to to learn better how to feel joy because that's what teaches you how to not hurt others or plan to hurt others is when you feel joy and I, I would submit that the best way to do that is a free free country like capitalism free economy now we skip a paragraph great indebtedness does not make men grateful but vengeful and if a little charity is not forgiven it turns into a gnawing worm so um, there can be a situation where someone is indebted seriously to somebody else and then the debt gets paid back and there's no ill feelings but I guess we're talking about when the debt's not paid back but um, from what I know of a lot of uh, capitalists in the 1800s who made their way by borrowing people money that's how one of the ways they started out getting rich is backing little companies and stuff um, and I don't see any evidence for this but that we have to say is investment or loaning or borrowing not charity he does say indebtedness no just just being in debt doesn't cause ill feeling or need not it doesn't in good people be reserved in accepting distinguish by accepting thus I advise those who have nothing to give so if you can't give anything if you're not a producer of anything at all then be, be good at taking be good at accepting but I am a giver of gifts I like to give as a friend to friends strangers however and the poor may themselves pluck the fruit from my tree that will cause them less shame um, but I'll give to his friends but beggars should be abolished entirely verily it is annoying to give to them and it is annoying not to give to them now, I don't know about the annoying not to give to them part um, but uh, it is annoying to give to them I used to uh, when I was like 12 or 13 before I discovered Ayn Rand I thought that would be the greatest charity of all it'd be go around and have hand every single bum you see a dollar or two that'd be great a person if they could afford to do that every single time they saw a homeless person give them a couple bucks I thought that'd be 
a good person right there, Eva. But uh, no, I don't think so. I think if you want to make it your life goal to run a soup kitchen where they can go and eat for free, that's fine. But you you get people in there who just take advantage of it. So drug addicts who know that they can get a free meal every day if they go down there and, and therefore they're never pushed into the circumstance of getting themselves a job finally or something like that. So have it your way. I don't think charity helps. And he's pretty pretty um, set against it it seems. Believe me my friends, the bite of conscience teaches men to bite. Aha! Uh -huh. Why do men get so angry? Why do they lash out? Why, you know, if they, if they were never taught violence and anger, then war wouldn't happen. So there's got to be some place in the time from they're born to they become a man where violence and anger are inculcated as a way of life. And we should just teach them dialogue and to get along and stuff. But Nietzsche will tell you to forget your little daydream. You can't just teach them dialogue. Conscience teaches men to bite. It's, it's being in a situation that was unfair and having nothing to do to get back at it that teaches men a tough, uh, gives men a tough hide, let's say. Uh, conscience teaches men to bite. You don't need the lesson to come from society or something like that. The guy can get it from his own experiences within his own head about justice and what's fair and so on. Continuing, worst of all, however, are petty thoughts. <laughs> you can think bad about other people and attack them and be warlike and angry. But the worst thing to do is to have a petty thought. Thoughts that don't matter, thoughts that are silly. Verily, even evil deeds are better than petty thoughts. I don't know if I would go just that far, because then you'd have to call petty thoughts evil deeds. I think you'd have to. But um, I do think that petty thoughts are petty, and one would ought to avoid them. It was one of the virtues on one of Ben, on ben Frank, Franklin's list of um, uh, 12 virtues. And then he, uh, somebody told him that he, he um, didn't have humility on there and he should be humble enough to... So he put humility as 13. So I had 13, but one of the virtues that uh, Ben Franklin gives is to stay silent when you have nothing else to say. Don't uh, say trivial or, or idle things. Just shut your mouth if you don't have anything uh, to say. And I try to follow that rule, and when I'm in company, um, I'm accused sometimes of didacticism, They're always teaching or something. Every time I open my mouth, I impart some tidbit and a, a, another tidbit and then the conclusion and stuff, so but whatever. I don't mind being insultedly called didactic because it was said of Thomas Jefferson that every time he opened his mouth, he had some point to make. Uh, Geez, did we get off the subject there? I guess not if we're talking about petty thoughts, and it's better not to have petty thoughts. Take it from Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, if you won't take it from Nietzsche. To be sure, you say, the pleasure in a lot of petty nastiness saves us from, saves us from many a big evil deed. But here, let's absorb this, this sentence first. Pleasure in a lot of petty nastiness, doing a lot of little bad things that aren't really very bad, but they're, they are bad, that saves us from doing big evil things. It keeps the steam let off, so steam doesn't build up when we do something really bad. You say this, says Nietzsche, but here one should not wish to save. Ha! You, don't, you don't want to save against that. You want the big evil deed to happen. Um, once in a while, something like that uh, makes you say that he was something of a precursor to Nazism. An evil deed is like a boil. It itches and irritates and breaks open. It speaks honestly. Behold, I am disease. Thus speaks the evil deed. That is its honesty. Jeez, leave it to Nietzsche to um, speak well of disease. But a petty thought is like a fungus. It creeps and stoops and does not want to be anywhere until the whole body is rotten and withered with little fungi. Yuck! But to him who is possessed by the devil, I whisper this word, better for you to rear up your devil, you know, like a horse.